welcome to Amateur Redneck Workshop. I'm Harold and uh, I got a, a different idea today, sort of different, maybe a little bit of some of the stuff that I've done before. Uh, what I'm going to make, I've been making these little knobs like this, you know, it's uh, got the bolt sticking out. But what I want to make is the knob that you screw it over a threaded object. So I got uh, some of these nuts, you can see they're, uh, I forget what you call them, but uh, I'm going to put these up inside of the plastic and make uh, internally threaded knobs. Now I want the shape to be a little different. I want it to have a shape kind of like that. I like that shape. So this is an opportune time to, to make a mold to do that because nothing that I have, you know, the stuff I have is not going to fit these nuts and it's not going to fit that so I'm going to have to start all over and figure it out as, as you guys watch over my show. Now I got uh, a recent arrival in stickers up there in the corner. I got uh, Scott Tyndall's home shop right up there. You might want to go over and take a look at his, his channel. He's uh, assisted by a young lady that has got a toolbox bigger than her. So. You might want to take a look at that. And uh, right, I, I've brought it up before. I want to bring it up again just because I know that several people haven't taken action yet. But uh, when I used to go to the Union Hall back when I was in my 20s, they had a little sign on the on the wall there that said, "If every man knows what every widow knows, no one would be without a will." And I know. I can see you sitting right over there. You said you was going to do it and you were going to take care of it. But you just hadn't got around to it yet, have you? Well, it's later than you think, so you know, you need to do something about it. If you've got a spouse, the both of you need to make a will. And uh, not joint wills, I understand that can cause problems later on. But, uh, you know, it's, it's not a terribly expensive thing. You can get uh, free will forms on the internet you know, print them out and go down and get them notarized and stuff. And I, I would highly recommend that you do that. And if you've got a lot of money for lawyers, go get a lawyer to draw them up. But uh, do something about it now. All right, well, that's my public service message for, for today. Let's get on with uh, machining out a mold to make some uh, internally threaded knobs. Repeat after me, children. All projects begin on the bandsaw. Here we are again. Now just look at that. You, when you work, you don't have to bleed. It's not, not required. But when I put these little guards on here, I didn't finish the job. I didn't round off the corners. Here a couple of weeks ago, I raised up from getting something out of the drawers. And poked a hole in my head with that thing so I rounded it off both ends with a file. But I should have went on and worked on the whole darn thing because right underneath it there and find a spot it's there right there was two more sharp spots and I just cut my arm on that sucker right there so I've rounded it off but now it's a little bit late you know Oh well, at least I won't get the next cut. All right, let's uh, let's quit whining and get on with the work. That was just a little safety reminder. But I gotta gotta get this guy right here. And That's a, a project probably never going to be, be done. I got this for a good cause. 
Still hadn't used it. All right. So you can take a nap while I roll this thing over and get the stuff out of there. I always worry about things when I go to lifting up this uh, rotary table. Now this thing sets things down a lot quicker than it's good for them. So I try to put a little something under it. To kind of cushion the blow. I don't want to ding up my mill table, as small as it might be. It's, it's what I got, you know. Alright, so. Yeah. This thing's got just a little bit too much wire on it. to get this thing set down and centered up the middle so we'll put you all back to sleep for just a couple of seconds I bought a, a blank there with a taper on it and I made this uh, piece to screw down in it and I think that's just about it there uh, maybe that's just about it okay That's not right. Somehow I must have misplaced the right piece. I'm going to have to find it though. So. You guys hang loose while I look. I left a sleeve in there from a previous use and that got in my way there somewhat. Pardon the shaky camera but it moved things around a little. Now we can put the chuck on there. table, put my little piece of aluminum in there, crank the head of this thing up because it's never at the right height, and then I'll bring you guys uh, around for another look. Okay, so the head's raised, this thing's pretty well centered up. I took the uh, center marking uh, scale and marked it there with my gentleman Randy Richard scribe. And uh, so I put this center drill in there and by eyeball it looks like it's pretty well dead center. And that's gonna be close enough for this because I've gotta take off quite a bit of the stuff around the outside edge here before the thing fits together. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drill a little center hole there just for appearance sake. And then we'll get on with cutting things out a lot bigger. So 
lucky I have some collets that go down to fairly small sizes. I can get just about anything to fit in there. Alright, so now that I'll switch the uh, switch out the collet for a bigger one and switch out the end meal and we'll make the center part we'll just well tell you what we'll do we'll just flatten it off well no we'll make the center part and we'll we'll level off the rest of it later on when there's less to root to remove so just a little nap and you'll be right back I uh, needed a five millimeter end mill for a little job I was doing and I ordered one and then it dawned on me, well, it's going to need a 5 millimeter collet. So I ordered one of these two. Came from China. And I got free shipping, so it came for about what the shipping would normally be on something. And they, they give you a pretty good service, and they even pre rusted the little booger for me. A little in here, too. They, they don't skip around on it. So I'll get that cleaned up, and then someday soon we'll get started on that project that's where a lot of the stuff order that way comes pre-rusted so it's not, not a big deal all right I got my DRO zeroed in on this thing we're going to come in about a half inch right at first and then after we've got that we'll we'll try to work our way outward some for the lobes um, pretty much going to try to freehand it but there's going to be a little lobe on the handle every 120 degrees which is why I got this table out this rotary table and you'll notice I've got these clamps on it well that's because I should have drilled a hole in that uh, tapered piece so I could bolt it from the other side and hold it tight but I didn't so now I have to hold it down up you know externally here but it'll work all right, that uh, that looks to be close. All right, set zero on there, and let's let it sink down in there a little bit. So. Something's not working right here because my numbers quit increasing, so that means that I'm not going in or else the, the piece is going down one or the other. So me double check the tightness and everything and I'll get right with you. Twenty thousandths cut, and we'll just rotate the round the thing around until we hit 120 degrees. Okay, now that we'll we'll come back up out of there. We're we'll only cut a hundred thousands. And we'll cut another load. I think. Let me stop and think here. Well, 360 divided by three it comes to uh, 120. Where that doesn't look like it's 120. I'm going to look it over while you guys take another nap. 
Good thing I was awake. That could have been a disappointing mistake. This uh, piece slipped in the chuck. So, there you go. I must have been cutting a little too fast. more of this uh, off camera because it's boring as everything. So far this is turning out a little easier than I had anticipated and I did crank the speed up to about 1200. This is the nut that's going to go in there. I'm going to cut it in half so I get two two things out of this but uh, I think about another hundred thousandths you know and that should be about deep enough and then I can go ahead and center drill a hole in it and we'll take it thin and smooth it off here and then take it over to the lathe and finish the thing off so let me make just a little deeper cut so far everything's easier than I thought it would be so we'll just continue on Okay, so now then the, the main thing to do is take the chuck off of here and put it on the lathe and uh, finish the little center hole and finish the outside and then we'll be well on the way to being through with making the mold. But I may knock off the day, I don't know, I'll let you know in a minute. Alright, so I figured before I knock off the day that I just fix this outward end of the mold before so I can roll it over and finish the back end. But as soon as I get it turned down to size, that's where I'm stopping. fits. It's just right. Alright, that's it. That's all for today. Tomorrow's a new one. We'll take it up then. We're watching Keith Brucker today and he had a, a bench block. It looked a lot like this. It's not entirely made out of metal and they're really handy for driving roll pins through and stuff but this is uh, this one's plastic and it's made for doing pistols and such you can put a slide in here and drive things through it I guess a, a barrel would fit into there to clamp it down or something but it's it's really a, a handy tool just got it the other day and I should have bought one years ago I guess but if you're going to do any home gunsmithing, you need that. It, it gives you that third hand. Alright, so. It takes a while for the camera to quit bouncing around, but now that we got down to this far, we're going to drill the, the center hole in the thing, and then we'll turn it around and machine down this other edge and maybe maybe cut it off a little bit shorter than what it is it's more metal than I need there so it's uh, let's see what happens if we try to drill a hole in it
giant holes drilled. All we need is a tap. I'll find one. Now, of course, we've got other things that we have to do before we're finished. But this will make a good start on it. Make sure this is nice and loose to slide around here. Clean a little of the chips off in front of it. It'll be plenty good enough for thread, I think, like it is, but I'll give it one more shot in. There we go. I think that's probably threaded far enough, so I'll knock this uh, off for a second, turn it around in the chuck, and we'll cut it off. I'm bothering to face this off. I'm going to cut this piece off of it, but it just seemed like the right thing to do, so there you are. Okay, so these are the, this is one of those little quarter inch 20 nuts that I bought, and I'm going to cut a little groove around it on both ends, then I'm going to cut it in half, and we'll make two knobs instead of one. I just want to cut a little groove in it. It makes me think that it's going to hold into a plastic cutter. up the ends a little and we'll go make a knob so the uh, the next reasonable question to ask is just how is this going to work well I've taken a bolt and I'll use this nut to kind of make it steady right there and screwed it up into here and it's going up inside pretty good ways there take the little nut right here screw him in here and I'll just screw him right down tight to the bottom and the whole thing should guarantee that I have uh, enough threads inside that I can screw a bolt in it without causing a problem and I can also retrieve this guy without getting plastic down in the threads I think that'd be an important thing to do too there we are, that's down tight. This nut around here is going to make sure that it stays tight. We'll put the, the top on it, same one we used for the other mold. And we'll fill her full of plastic and see how it comes out. Of course, i got to go heat up the plastic, so take another sip of whatever you're sipping on there. Okay, so I've got the mold tightly assembled on this thing. The mold being down here held together with a couple of clamps. If I had been a little bit better on planning, I would have planned out a little cam arrangement to just stick them in there and cam something up against it to hold it together. But I, I wasn't that far ahead <laughs> when I was doing this stuff. And I've got plenty of yellow plastic. Got all this I cut up the other day and a whole nother jug that will probably produce none of that much over again so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let her hit 400 and wallow up and down at 400 I'm just going to let her do that for about 5 or 10 minutes and then I'll try and squeeze the plastic into the mold I, I'm doing it that way so that the mold can get nice and hot down there at the bottom I think having a hot mold helps a lot so the plastic doesn't get hard going in so, you guys take another sip of your drink. 
All right, time's come to do the deed. I think the plastic's hot enough. We'll just go ahead and pack it down into that bowl. That mold is really super hot. I heated it a little bit with a, a torch and I probably got it too hot. Alright, so I'm going to call that done. We'll unscrew it and then I'll meet you over at the workbench to see what we got. Well, I didn't need to put all that heat on the mold. All they did was make, the, make it stick to the top here and uh, some of the plastic, you know, melted and run out under the edge. I've had people <clears throat> tell me, oh, you've got to make an air vent and all that kind of thing, but you really don't. It's hard to keep the air in something like this. If you could hear my air fittings over there that are machined and screwed together, leaking like a sieve, you would know that there's no way to trap air in this thing. Now, getting it too hot made me lose my nice uh, yellow color and uh, probably made the plastic a lot harder than it normally would be. It, it looks to me like if you heat the plastic a lot, it makes it harder. Let's see if we can go ahead and knock this thing out of here. This is the first time I've used this mold and I may have a, a small amount of trouble Knocking the, knocking the thing out of there. I'm gonna have to go back and try to make a little angles into things. I don't know, but I'm gonna stop the camera a minute, go set this on the vise, and pound on it a little bit and see if it'll come on out of there. Well, this is a vise, huh? and uh, so let's, let's see if I can tap on this thing a little bit and it'll come out of there. This may not be a viable mold. I've already dented that part. I haven't got anything to move. Not good. So, all right, let me tinker around with it and then I'll tell you how it comes out. Well, I'm sure some of you guys said, well, look at that idiot. He, he's never going to be able to knock that out because it's screwed in. That's what I threaded the hole there for was so I could pull that metal nut back tight against the mold. So naturally, I couldn't drive it out with a hammer. Boy, <laughs> anyway, I don't know for sure how I'm going to get it out of the mold. When I make the knobs that are facing the other way, they come out of the mold pretty quick. You know, I just unscrew the mold off of them. This one is going to be a, another kind of problem altogether. And I have to figure out a way to eject my uh, part from the mold once it's made. Maybe just let it cool off, but I've noticed the stuff shrinks a lot when it cools off. So if I let this get nice and cool, it may just pop out of there, you know? Uh, that'll take a little while. And if anything happens here in the next few minutes, I'll wake you guys up to look at it again. Otherwise, we'll call an end to this, uh, this episode and let me try to figure out how to, how to handle this problem. All right, so as it cooled, it uh, got looser. It didn't make a very pretty knob because I lost my yellow and the plastic bubbled from being so dang hot. You can see the bubble holes, there's a hole right there. And I can guarantee you that's from being too hot because I've done it before. But that's the general shape of the knob that I'm gonna make and I don't think it looks too bad other than the fact that I roasted it something awful so I think that <clears throat> I'll turn off the camera and go over there and make another try at making another one and I'll just have to get my nut out of there reclaim it or something and uh, but I've got another one that's why I made two so I could mess up and if I have any good results or bad I'll come back and let you know in just a minute all right I've purged out all the overheated colorless plastic and I got back into the uh, orange colored stuff with a little yellow mixed in. I've only been putting yellow in it, so there's quite a lot of this stuff left in the bottom. If 
before I get to straight yellow. But I kind of like the orange and yellow color anyway, so that part's all right. Yeah, we will in a minute. This thing will cool off some. And we'll see how it comes out. But you can see that that's not colorless like before. Or I say colorless is not burned out plastic. How's that? Alright, so we'll let it cool a little bit and it, it'll shrink like it did before. And I'll pop it out of there and we'll see what we got. Alright, this time I got something good. Huh? Look at that. Isn't that pretty? I don't know what the little black spots are on it. I must have had a little dirt in there, but look at that. That knob is shaped right and it's got pretty much the shape I wanted it to have. So I would have to say I don't heat the mold. <laughs> Just screw it on there, let the plastic get good and melted and then press it in and that's all there is to it so having actually turned out a successful day I'm gonna go in make me a cup of coffee and brush my teeth and load up my range bag and I'm going to the shooting club and while I'm doing that you guys will probably be get get a little entertainment from Bubba or Ole or somebody so it ain't over yet I didn't sing. Ole had a reputation for always catching a lot of fish. That made the game warden kind of suspicious, you know. He figured he'd, he'd go along fishing with Ole, find out just what he was up to. So the game warden, you know, he got three rods and all that, and three boxes of tackle and stuff brought with him, so he'd be pretty well prepared for anything, you know. And he gets in the boat with Ole, and Ole rows out into the middle of the, of the stream there, you know. And all Ole's brought with him is a little brown paper bag, you know. Ole reaches in the bag, pulls out a piece of dynamite, lights it, throws it in the water, and goes, boom, you know. And there's water flying all over the place. And when the water starts falling, there's about a dozen fish floating on top of the water. Ole rows out there, you know, and he starts gathering them in. Game warden finally finds his voice, and he's so mad he could just spit, you know. He says, Holy, Holy, you can't do that. That's against the law. Holy, you know, he's got his fish pulled in. He looks at the game warden. He reaches in that bag, pulls out another stick of dynamite, and lights it, tosses it to the game warden. He says, Well, you're going to just sit there, or you're going to fish. Well, that's all, folks. Uh, Y'all try to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber leave a comment if you got something to say and above all remember keep on keeping on bye now